Hello everyone, it's been a while since I released a Voron Zero video, but today we will continue working on my Voron Zero. So not much, not, not just not much, nothing has changed since the last video. So you now this is the same Voron Zero. The only thing I did is I removed the Raspberry Pi from the back because well, I was testing something, it didn't work. In the last video I talked about some print quality problems I had with this Voron Zero and yeah, honestly, I was just really burnt out of trying to fix those problems because I spent a ton of time trying to figure out what was going on and I still haven't fixed it. I mean, as I said, nothing has changed since that video, but I do have a theory about what's going on and that's about the NEMA 14 motors that I'm using here. So these are from the OG LDO kit and uh, yeah, I think these are just not powerful enough. I think that's what's going on. Uh, that's at least a theory. Again, something could be wrong with the z-axis, so maybe I didn't fix it at all. If that's the case, then I'm going to attempt the uh, belted z-mode, and uh, yeah, we'll see. But one of the things that I'm going to do, the major thing in this video, is I want to change the tool head from the mini afterburner here to the mini stealth burner. Now, uh, this is not what I'm going to use. In fact, the current parts are actually printing right now on my Boron 2, but yeah, the print quality on this was awful, but yeah, you can see what's wrong with the current print basically this was printed on the war one zero and um yeah obviously i'm not going to use something printed this awfully i also swapped the uh, parts of the hot hand on this so right now i'm using an e3d revo uh this is the beta version i haven't actually purchased a new one but i'm going to swap the heatsink on this uh, this is the micro heatsink to the uh boron heatsink because you know it's we're building a boron might as well use a boron uh hot hand and I also bought a new nozzle as well, which is in the, on the way. And the reason for that is this current nozzle is kind of uh, partially clogged and I might be able to fix it, but uh, you know, it's just easier to replace. And then this will go into the acetone vat. It'll sit in there until it's clean, I guess. That's what I do with my clogged nozzles, because I'm lazy. Anyway, so uh, yeah, let's begin. So the XM color parts are still printing on the Voron 2, but now I have some of the base color parts which are just still black so this is the back of the mini self burner again the rest are printing but i also need to change these four parts the tops of the x and y joints and the front uh, idler pieces on the you know x and y so um yeah let's install these four parts while the x and color parts for the mini self burner are still printing So as you just saw, I replaced the X and Y joints, the front uh, idlers for the X and Y axes, and I also removed the electronics from back here. The reason for the removal of the electronics is, I talked about this many many times before, but my Duet Wi-Fi really isn't in the world's best condition, and yeah, it has some problems basically. Some communication issues are one of them, another problem is uh, this sometimes doesn't really boot, and then I actually have the reflash clipper to this and uh, obviously that can be really annoying too so uh yeah i'm going to replace this the plan is to replace this with a raspberry pi pico but uh we'll see depends on how a few things goes which board i replace it with i do have a did i say raspberry pi pico i meant big 3 tech skr pico i also have a big 3 tech skr mini e3 v2.0 real long name but it's an okay board for this too so i could just replace it with that if i don't get a pico uh, so yeah i want to do that also uh, while tearing this down i noticed that this one super glue joint kind of cracked the reason i printed this like this when i printed this like this is because i needed to print this on my Warren zeros heat pad but now that I have my Boron 2 working, I'm just going to reprint this as a just a unibody top hat so that I won't have to deal with any of this crap. So no, I won't be upgrading to the Boron 0.2 extrusion based top hat. 
I could do that but I'd need to buy new extrusions and I'd need new panels. I do like the hinge of the Warren 0.2 top hat but uh, that doesn't work with my uh, panels and again I don't really want to buy new panels so I'll just modify my design to be a unibody uh, top hat and print it on the Warren 0, a uh, Warren 2. Uh... It'll also probably look better too, the print quality on this wasn't great. Again, my Warren Zero for a very long time hasn't really printed that well, so... Yeah, uh, it, I think it just makes sense to reprint that as anybody on the Warren 2. Remove the motors like I said. These motors are from the OG LDO Warren 0, 0.0 group by kit. And as you can see from here, the current D support, the max current D support is 0.5 amps, which is really low so these are kind of weak motors and I uh, think I might have uh, driven more current through these yeah anyway I'm going to replace these with a 1.6 amp motor so motors I guess so uh, that's not going to be an issue and I already ordered them so actually they should arrive today but it's USPS so who fucking knows we'll see uh, here as I said I want to mount uh, the SKR Pico and if it doesn't work out then SKR Mini E3 V2.0 but you'll also notice that the Raspberry Pi isn't here in either I now that I get I am able to get rid of the Duet Wi-Fi here I can actually move the PCB a little bit inwards and the same with the Duet, uh, Raspberry Pi and the current mount of the Raspberry Pi uh, I don't have it here but the GPIO pins are behind this extrusion so they are kind of annoying so I don't want to redo this entire panel, so I'm just going to 3D design and 3D print a bracket that moves both of these more inwards, and that should actually fit. So uh, yeah, I think this is as much progress as I can make for now. But once parts arrive, I will continue. I'm not going. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the same time lapse thing that I did so far or not. Honestly, it's kind of difficult to work when camera is in the way. But I don't know. I thought I should try something different. So. So as you can see I mounted the big 3 tech SKR Pico here uh, using the bracket I was talking about. This was printed on my Voron 2 and it's, as I said the Duet Wi-Fi has also moved a bit inwards. I also uh, I said Duet Wi-Fi right, I meant Raspberry Pi. I also rotated it 180 degrees so that the USB ports are sticking down since pretty much everything that needs USB has the USB cable coming from down there and you know it was also a pain in the ass to get to with these motors because you know, uh, the Raspberry Pi sticks out until here and then yep, you don't have much room for the USB cables. I wanted to uh, mount the SKR Pico in this orientation. These cables are barely long enough to reach these screw terminals, so and I don't want to redo all that. I'll still have to deal with these Molex KK connectors, the KK connectors. I actually do like more than JSTXHs, but JSTXH is the standard, so I don't blame Big 3 Tech for this. I kind of wish Duet people also used JSTXH since that is the standard, but they do their own thing. They even have their own firmware for the most part. I was running Clipper obviously, but yeah, I mean, it, it's designed to be a, its own ecosystem, I guess. So yeah, the next step for me to do is to deal with the wiring, as I said, so I'll do all that uh, tonight. And then I have a clip about these motors that I've recorded, so I'll put that after this in the video. Well, I just figured out something. The replacement motors I ordered on the Warren Zero for the AMP drives are the famous LDO motors that have the VFA issue. So, yep, uh, great news. I'm still going to test these, but yeah, and I don't know. The print quality might suffer as a result of that. And if it does, I think there are ways of trying to reduce the VFA artifacts on the prints, so we might explore that. But VFA artifacts is, by the way, the redundant but anyway uh, so uh, yeah, we might have to do that I guess we'll see Fabrico really should have just uh, disclosed that this is the uh, motor with the VFA issue like a uh, motor with a VFA issue on the Voron Zero could be perfectly fine for plenty of other applications so it doesn't disqualify this motor as being a good motor but this is like most people buying this are probably buying this for a Voron Zero and on the Voron Zero this motor has the VFA issue which uh, means they really should add a disclaimer and at least in the description for this and here it is the mini self burner assembled so again I'm sticking with the same color scheme so Great. Uh, you should probably watch the Voron video if you want to, like a better summary of what the changes are. But basically, it has a 
hot swap uh, is more easily swappable uh, hot end mount. It has a significantly better filament path. It's also easier to uh, mount and dismount from the carriage. There are three screws, so these two that screw here, and there's one that's not mounted, but basically goes here and screws into this motor plate. So you take out three screws and this whole thing comes out, which is uh, significantly better than the original design. I wasn't using the two M2 self tapper screws, so I was able to do this already, but that comes at a, like you lose some rigidity because of that, so it wasn't recommended. This, on the other hand, should be very easily hot swappable. Has a better strain relief as well, so I have the Kuspa mount here, but uh, normally it's just uh, this piece that I call Patrick. and. Um, yeah, it mounts in four locations instead of two. That's basically the main difference. It uses the same motor, uh, the stand-up motor, but I swapped mine. I was using the LDO, the original thinner extruder motor from LDO. Instead, I swapped to the Moons motor here. The thicker one should be fine, but the thinner one has some downsides, which is why the thicker one is now the uh, recommended motor. And yeah, this was an excuse for me to swap that to the to a different motor, and I went with the Moon's motor here just to try it. The whole assembly also feels a lot more uh, solid, like nothing bends, nothing flexes. It really feels like a solid, like actually manufactured and came from a factory kind of assembly, which is really nice. It also uses the 3010 fan instead of the 3007, like I said in the beginning of the video. So I swapped that to the 24 volt 30, uh, 3010 fan I had, which uh, again, I'm, I definitely prefer that over the 3007. Uh, you can also see the two LED mounts here and here. These are Adafruit sequins. These aren't RGB. You know, it's something the cell burner does too. So I guess they wanted to bring that to this. And well, I'm not going to complain. It's nice to be able to see what you're printing a bit better. Uh, a note about the assembly, this assembling this, I did I did it without a manual, so there that's probably part of it, but it, fa it felt like it was more complicated. As I said, there are more screws. There are some hidden ones, for example, there are two screws that go like this, and that's behind these fans, for example, and you know, weird uh, screws like that. Uh, everything has to be assembled in order, which is not too surprising since this is a war on zero part, but just something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, uh, oh, and um, I use socket heads almost everywhere. There were two locations one that one's a screw behind this, and there's another one around here, but in the behind this plate, so uh, that uh, something rests on. So there are two screws that has to be have to be button heads other than that I think everything can be socket heads I did use button heads for these two but I don't think that was necessary so just something to keep in mind if you are a Boron Zero user you're, you're probably using button head screws anyway but if you're one of the like one of us weirdos who really like socket head screws or button head screws then yeah there are dozens of us at least <laughs> you that's something to keep in mind so you will still need some button heads but that's not surprising for a Boron Zero as I said I've also been working on some Kuspa mounts for the mini self burner. This is again the badly printed one, but it's a good, uh, just a build to test these mounts. So uh, yeah, I actually came up with four different mounts. Two of them are here because I don't have enough Kuspas. They're actually installed on other printers, but two I have. So yeah, one of them, and this is I think the best mount is the replacement to the strain relief, or as I call it, Patrick, because. Yeah, I hope you see the resemblance. Uh, yeah, the, the, my favorite one is this because this is easy to reach, easy to mount, and uh, yeah, it should be very stable. It's actually s mounted with four screws, which is also nice. Plus, I, can, I actually did like a little notch here to hold the top edge of the board here in place as well. Not that necessary since these two screws are more than good enough, especially because the ADXL345 is actually here. So, you know, it's not here or anything. Uh, if you uh, if you didn't know, the ADXL345 is supposed to be next to a screw or as close to it as possible. Some PCBs out there don't follow that, but this is actually important. EV Block has a video about this if you want more information about that. And also the ADXL345 data sheet also specs that. Anyway, this is one of them. Another one is this, which you should ignore because yeah, it, it doesn't fit in there. This was an early prototype, so moving on from this. 
this one may not work with uh, toolhead PCBs, so that's the thing you have to keep in mind with this carriage mount. And lastly, if you've seen the mini afterburner mount, the mini afterburner mount just replaces these two screws on, onto the mini afterburner, that is, but you know, same idea, and just mounts in front like this. And that should be also possible with this. I also designed this uh, breakout PCB for the mini stealth burner using the 18 pin connector I was using previously back in the since the, I did the motor plate upgrade on the Warren 0.1 and that was a custom PCB based on Timit's design but for whatever reason back then I used 18 pins I don't really remember why I think I wanted some extra pins on the tool head for a future expansion but I don't really remember what I had in mind so uh, yeah this is based on that but uh, yeah, that's why I'm using 18 pins is what I mean, but uh, yeah, this replaces the Patrick uh, strain relief on the back and Yeah, it's a very simple PCB obviously it's just a bunch of GSC exchange connectors and a screw terminal for the heater I've also been working on a Standard 14 pin version of this for you know, most people who are using the standard connector I don't know if I'm going to release this or not. This is not something I'm using on my one 0.2 obviously uh, 0.2 ish. I'm not doing the entire upgrade, but I guess upgrading the toolhead is enough to be consider considered as 0.2. Um, yeah, but if there is interest in this and if the Warren Design team doesn't release anything, then I guess I could order this and test this, so let me know if you're interested in this. There is also a more complicated version of that, of the standard toolhead uh, breakout PCB, that's this. Again, it places the Patrick strain relief, also has the eyes obviously since this is a volume part, and it's a hexagon, so. I guess I'm only capable of designing PCBs shaped like a hexagon since the Kuspa. Uh, yeah, this has a bunch of additional features over this and also it's huge and I'll explain why it is huge. But the extra features are you can see that there are the voltage selectors for the fans and on the back side you can see that there are two uh, mi microfit connectors here instead of one so you can connect your thermistor with a microfit as well. If you have an E3D Revo then you know that's easier. On this one you can use a microfit or a screw terminal here as you can see so you're only supposed to populate one of them same here you can see these two holes here so if you don't have the microfits you can put a screw terminal in here for the heater rest of the connectors are in the front and uh, it just makes them easier to plug in and unplug and it also is more uh, tidier when it comes to wire management so that's why these face the front these are JSTXHs, just i don't have the model but the main reason why this is this big is uh, these about well, the eye part here. So this this is a rendering error on Easy EDA. These are supposed to be holes, and you're supposed to loop a zip tie through that. So this keeps the uh, strain relief functionality of the uh, Patrick uh, piece normally, which is supposed to be a strain relief. So if you want to keep the strain relief, then you need a big PCB like this. So. I don't know if I'm going to release either one of these, uh, but if there's interest, let me know and I can work on finishing this design and uh, release these on a separate GitHub repository. This one will be released on the random PCBs GitHub repository I have, where I keep the, also keep the 18 pin motor plate and the Warren 0.1 toolhead PCBs. So uh, this will be published there. I already ordered this PCB from PCBWay and it's already here. So I just need to install this and yeah, I mean, it's a very simple PCB so it should just work uh, work just fine. These two, uh, these need a bit of polishing, but again, if there's interest, let me know and I can uh, work on finishing these two designs. So here's the new top hat on top of just joining those parts and getting rid of the you know, the screws for joining them together. I also did some design improvements. Uh, yeah, for example, you can see these zip tie uh, loops here. So uh, it, on the old one, I had to just basically screw in a zip tie holder thing that I designed previously in there. It was kind of ugly. So I added these. I also added a little cutout here for the wires coming from the LED panel. That was just basically jammed in there and uh, the only reason it worked is because it was multiple pieces so there was some you know I could just loosen a screw so that the cable could fit in there but that definitely wasn't ideal and uh, when this is unibody obviously this is one piece there's not any room for movement so that does matter also some changes to the way this mounts so you can see that I got rid of these uh, the uh, basically the feet that uh, you screw in so there is a there was a triangle coming out like that and there was a screw hole in there to screw this to the top extrusion 
uh, that worked but I realized with the Warlon 0.2 there is a new way of mounting the top hat and you know, with the on the front with those little twisting with this one now we can see threaded insert holes here and then I'll just put a screw in there only thing that I'm not a big fan of is you have to use button heads you can't use socket heads but uh, you know it, it's fine so yeah I'll do that on the front on the back the back panel which is aluminium in my case already screws into the top so it should hold it in place so yeah it was no longer necessary basically and it was a pain in the ass to remove this top hat earlier so yeah I think this will work a lot better another minor thing I changed is I made this cutout a little larger as well for the wires to uh, go out of the chamber uh, so that you know that's the LED and the USB cables for the webcam top hat is finally printed and assembled this actually took me th three prototypes to get this right but yeah it is finally there the top panel fits nicely and uh, yeah the wire management works as well as I expected uh, this uh, with this print unfortunately I ended up printing a bit too close to the bed so you can see the white stress marks on the ABS but they kind of match the aluminium color here anyway so I'm just going to use this other than that overall the print quality is pretty good significantly better than the old prints that's for sure so yeah I think this is pretty good and uh, yeah this is ready to be installed on the Warron Zero as you can see the Warron 0.2 is fully assembled and well everything is working right now it isn't printing but uh, everything is working um, you can see that the tool head is in place I don't think I covered that the PCB behind that is in place as well and the top hat is in place so I guess I should give you a closer look at that stuff so uh, yeah the tool head and you can maybe see some of the PCB there I'm not going to be able to show that that well but it is this PCB I showed earlier in the video and yeah it, it is working it's a very simple PCB so uh, it should work anyway and the top hat with the diffused LED lighting panel looks really nice as well I'm very happy with that that's part of the reason why I didn't want to do the War 0.2 extrusion top hat upgrade you can see that I'm using the uh, Warren 0.2 style top hat mounts here but I don't know if you can tell from the video or not but that is an MGF printed part I originally printed that out of ABS like usual but uh, but isn't like this part isn't easy enough to twist with your uh, nail but it's also the ABS was soft enough that it would just deform when I use a metal screwdriver so I felt the need to uh, use a tougher plastic so I ordered them out of MGF I don't know if that is because this top hat you know since this is unibody and since ABS shrinks this was compensated for in the design so this is actually a little larger than it's supposed to be so maybe that's just pushing the screw a little bit out of alignment or something so maybe that is the reason or maybe it's just I don't know maybe it's just how this, this, this is designed but yeah in my case I felt the need to use MJF and that's what I did and with the same order I also ordered a Kuspa nozzle mount so this is the standard nozzle thread here this can't be ABS printed well it can be ABS I guess but it can't be FDM printed so this has to be MJF but if you want a Kuspa nozzle mount that's something I've been working on for a while and yeah this will be released on the Kuspa repository when the design is finalized you might have uh, seen this Z motor that's another thing I had to do between the clips in this video I had to replace the Z motor back there with the uh, uh, with a Z motor I ordered from DFH uh, the reason for that is this motor worked for a while worked fine for a while but the thing is uh, when I powered this again, it just didn't really work well. Like it moved a little bit, kind of like a kind of like one phase, how it acts when a, a single phase is disconnected, but the other phase is connected. But uh, I did check, I did replace the cable. I did a bunch of troubleshooting. This motor is that. It's not the cable. And yeah, I needed a new motor. I ordered a new motor from DFH, and that's what I have installed there. And yeah, that motor works with the same cable. So yeah, this motor is that i don't know uh i guess that's another ldo motor i replaced in this video and i guess the extruder motor is also ldo so i replaced all the ldo motors but uh 
yeah, it's not LDO's fault to be clear, it's just a coincidence. With the new DFH motor though, you can maybe see the height gap here. So you can see that the extruder is no longer touching the bottom panel. I'm not a fan of that, so I will have to design new skirts. Did I say extruder? I don't know, it's been a long day. Uh, I'll need to design new skirts, either base, I'll probably base that on the Voron 0.2 skirts. And uh, yeah, that will be in a later video. But uh, speaking of the Voron 0.2, as you can see, not much changed other than the... That, no, I didn't use much of the Voron 0.2 other than the mini self burner. And uh, yeah, uh, I guess that and these two uh, front top head mounts, I guess. The AMB motors are still based on the Voron 0.1, though to be fair, that's pretty much the same design on the Voron 0.2 and Voron 0.0, even if you go back in time. One thing that's different with the Voron 0.2 is that Z-limit switch that's in the 0.2 is moved down here. But, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I didn't fix it. Uh, especially because with the 0.2 bed mount, you also have to move the lead screw. And that also means I need a new panel down here. And yeah, I don't really want to do that. Again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why change it? Everything works. And I can say that the print quality is getting a lot better as well. I didn't have a ton of time to mess with the print quality, but this is one of the earlier prints without much tuning. You can see that there are some overhangs here that need to be tuned. And I also need to tune pressure advance, input shaper, and extrusion multiplier. But overall, the print quality is looking a lot better than before. So it's either was the Z motor if it gradually died or something like that. Maybe that was the cause of the artifacts, or it was the AMB motors. Uh, I don't. I won't know because this, I didn't do this scientifically. I just changed a bunch of stuff at at the same time. But yeah, the thing is, it's working well now. So yeah, uh, I just need to do a bit more tuning. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention is the VFAs, uh, vertical fine artifacts as a result of the LDO motors that I'm currently using uh, there are there so if you take a close look at this uh, Galileo extruder part uh, you can see those vertical lines I'll try to tune them but there are a few things you can do in the printer.cfg and if that doesn't work you can also print at a 45 degree angle and uh, well, that's a bit of a pain with the 120 watts so yeah I might also just replace those motors again I actually have the uh, DFH equivalents of those motors because that the DFHC motor I ordered well that was part of a kit so I ended up buying the entire kit so I might just replace those with the DFH motors and the VFAs should go away but yeah I don't know uh, I guess we'll see in a later video. I also want to print up a lot faster than I'm able to print though and that the main bottleneck seems to be the E3D Revo hotend so I've been waiting for their high flow Revo hot, uh, nozzle for a while now but with their recent obsidian troubles, I don't really know if when they will do that, so I might change the hot end to a different one. Or oh, I might not, I don't know, uh, but that's another thing that might happen in a later video. But uh, yeah, I guess that's really it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like down below, and thanks for watching.